most people consider the Chinese to be the ones who are least likely to assimilate. And unbelievable stories are told about them due to sheer ignorance. Amongst them that, for instance, the Chinese uh, eat vermin constantly. Here's a classic example. This is a box of rat poison. And on it, its name is Rough on Rats, we see there's a little Chinese man eating a rodent. And it promises that if you use this rat poison, it will be as efficient as a Chinese in getting rid of the rodents on your property. Here again is another popular cartoon. In this cartoon, we see a Chinese, like an octopus, doing all these various jobs. He's making boots, he's rolling cigars, he's making shirts, and as you look carefully, you'll see he's also taking the money away, leaving European-American young men idle for want of work. Uh, if you're not quite sure, and some people question, Wait a minute, Chinese making cigars? How did that happen? When did that happen? The Chinese were synonymous with making cigars in the 1800s until this started to happen. There were certain manufacturers who began to use cigar bands that said, made by white men, to ensure that the Chinese companies would not be able to survive. This kind of encouragement led to anti-Chinese rallies, and the anti-Chinese rallies led to these incidents. Between 1870 and 1900, these things happened repeatedly throughout the Western Territories in California. Here, for instance, is the anti-Chinese riot of Denver, Colorado in 1870, when 3,000 citizens attempted to burn the Chinatown to the ground. They caught one unfortunate man and lynched him in the street. In Los Angeles in the 1870s, 18 Chinese people were lynched in the streets, three of them women. Extreme, but not isolated, was the Rock Springs, Wyoming massacre of 1885, when every Chinese in town was taken to the edge of town and shot. In the middle of all of this, the Chinese Exclusion Act is put into effect. The Chinese Exclusion Act said essentially no more Chinese are allowed to enter the United States, period. This meant that Chinese who were home in China visiting family and who attempted to return could not re-enter. It did mean that those who were here could qualify as residents, but they could not bring their families here. They could bring their sons here, if the son was registered as the son of a resident, but they could not bring their families here, no women. The only people who were allowed to bring Chinese women were a special exempt group known as those persons necessary for international trade. This meant ambassadors, teachers and students, and merchants, which is why to this day, when Chinese-American families enter here, we talk, and they say, oh, we've been here for five generations, we've been here for six generations. We know they were founded by a merchant because there's no other way they could have stayed as a family. As the laws began to stack up very quickly, it produced this effect. Number one, the Chinese became ineligible aliens by virtue of their race. Because they were members of the Mongolian race, they could never ever become American citizens. And then it was only a short step to ensure that ineligible aliens were not allowed to buy land. Ineligible aliens were not allowed to join most professions by law. Ineligible aliens were not allowed to marry American citizens. Oh, I should clarify. A Chinese resident who was an ineligible alien could marry an American woman who was a citizen, but she would automatically lose her American citizenship and become a person without papers. If an American citizen married a Chinese woman who was a resident, she could stay because of something most, most of us have forgotten. Up until relatively recently, uh, the law considered the wife the property of the husband. I know most of us have gone way beyond that now. This was the situation. Chinatowns existed. They shrank because there was no real immigration to speak of. They shrank increasingly because there were no women here, basically. Uh, Chinatowns became known as the bachelor society because people visiting would assume that all these men were, were bachelors. There were no women apparent. But of course, in fact, most of them were married. They had left overseas to go, to go to other countries to support their families back in China. 